and today we're going to take a look at Helsing. Helsing was one of the first animes I've ever seen where it had to do with vampires. The second one being Vampire Night, but I don't really remember too much of that one. I may have to rewatch that one at some point. But anyways, back onto the topic here. The first time I've ever heard of Helsing was actually from the books. I borrowed two of them from the library at my school at the time. Yeah, would you believe it that my school actually had two books of Helsing? And the weirdest part is that the school that I borrowed them from was a Catholic school. It's pretty funny thinking about it now. So anyways, here's the main plot to Helsing. The main organization is called Helsing, and the current leader of Helsing is named Integra Helsing. And their goals are supposed to search and destroy everything that is a supernatural force of evil, most of them being vampires. In fact, some of the main bad guys are supposed to be neo-Nazis that formed a group called Millennium. But the main character is Alucard, which I'm sure most of you know this already, but Alucard backwards is Dracula. And Alucard is one of the most powerful vampires within the organization. And I find him to be a pretty laid-back badass. In fact, you know what's something I just realized is that he kind of reminds me of Dante from Devil May Cry. I mean, for one, they both wear a lot of red and they both, like, have, like, demonic powers. Well, Alucard having Dracula kind of powers, but anyways, you get the idea, it's just supernatural shit. And they both happen to use two pistols, one being black and the other one being white. Hmm, I wonder if that's a coincidence. Either way, it's just kind of funny realizing that. And then there's Victoria. She first started off as a police officer, but then she gets overrun by a bunch of ghouls. And she almost gets killed by a vampire priest, but she is saved by Alucard. So what Alucard's idea to do with her is that he turns her into a vampire and makes her work as an assistant for him. And when she first becomes a vampire, she really doesn't know what to do. In fact, she rejects drinking a lot of blood. But eventually, she does hold out to drinking more blood and becomes stronger each episode. So that's the very basic of what you need to know about Helsing. And it may sound like a very simple plot, but there are a lot of backstories that do happen. A lot of them having to do with Integra's background. But I'm not going to go too much into detail about that because, well, I don't want any spoilers at all. But there definitely is a lot of action to be had within this one. But for now, we're going to take a look at the animation. And I have to say, the animation is actually pretty impressive for its time. I really like the detail that they put into the weapons. Although sometimes some of the scenes do look kind of, like, foggy, but at the same time, it actually kind of suits the way how it is. And I don't mean, like, foggy as in, like, being outside foggy, like, even, like, sometimes when they're indoors, it just kind of looks that way. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, considering how it does suit, so, really, I don't have much complaints. Now as for the voice acting, it has its good moments, and it has some okay moments. Alucard is being played by Crispin Freeman, who actually does a damn good job at him. You know, I've mentioned his name quite a bit throughout this feature so far, and, well, most of the time he's always done a good job, so, therefore, yeah, you can definitely say he's definitely a good one. Integra is being played by Victoria Harwood. She's not a very well-known voice actress, but she does do a pretty good job here. And Victoria is being played by Katie Gray. And, sadly to say, her voice for her is not that great. I don't know why, but to me, she kind of sounds like a 13-year-old. Which is a little weird, and it's a shame because I really do like her character. I just wish they either, you know, had a better voice actress for her, or maybe if the same voice actress just, you know, did a better job. And then lastly I'll mention is the Valentine Brothers, and Luke Valentine is being played by Patrick Sates, who is not only one of my favorite voice actors, but he does a really awesome job. And Jaw Valentine is being played by Josh Phillips. He's another voice actor that I'm not too familiar with, but he actually does the role really awesomely. He plays a crazy son of a bitch really damn well. In fact, his craziness kind of reminds me of the character Jaggy from Fist of the North Star, which, well, in my opinion, I think that's pretty awesome. But that's all I'm going to say about the voices. There are some good things, and there are some just okay things. Now, I'm not going to go out and say that they're terrible, I just think that they could have been a hell of a lot better. But overall, it is generally good. Now as for the score, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, this is a pretty great show. It has a lot of action, it has some funny parts, not a whole lot, but it does have some. And I just really like the dark and grittiness to it, and a lot of the characters are really awesome. And only having to read two of the books and then watching the anime, I felt pretty happy with it. And personally, I think it's definitely a good show, especially one that has vampires within it. So all in all, I can definitely recommend it.